entries on this roster, the quick turnaround. What's the bigger challenge, uh, trying to figure out who's healthy enough to play Thursday and, and ha who needs maybe a few extra days to be ready for next Well, week? I think that those are things that we have to take into consideration. Um, you know, the health of the football team and how many uh, guys we realistically think can be back on a short week. You know, we had some injuries going into the game last week, some guys that weren't able to make it. Um, again, I'm confident that they're all working extremely hard uh, to get back. It's just this time of year, you know, we need everybody that we can get, and then we'll monitor, you know, the injuries kind of coming out of the game and see how guys feel and try to, you know, make a best decision for the team. How important is still try to figure out a way to win and not expect to flip a switch against the Jags? I mean, I think every time you show up to work, you're trying to find ways to win. You know, prepare to win, you know, mentally, um, you know, physically. I think at this point in time of the year, there's only so much that you can do to, you know, really improve uh, physically. I don't think anybody's getting any faster, anybody's getting any stronger at this stage of the game where we're at in the season. But, but how can we improve mentally? Um, how can we understand? How can we communicate better? So I, I think that every day, that every time we come to work, we're trying to win, especially you know when we go out on the field. It would be a, kind of a case by case basis, but what is the balance in trying to figure out maybe who needs to rest, who needs to play, to, to go into that final game with with momentum? Well, I think we'll have to prepare this week and, and then you know see where guys are uh, on Wednesday and even Thursday, you know, before we you know ultimately make a decision, you know, and see. You know who who you feel like could could have a setback or who you know could could need some time. I think that there's you know some things we'll have to look at. You missed it. You always had confidence level that in a close situation they're going to find a way to win. You feel like that confidence is still there. Well, I mean, I think we we have to continue to practice, and I think you have to do those things. We just you know have had some close games where. And we weren't able to pull it out for a couple, you know, many different reasons that we found ourselves in those situations. We, we have executed some situations uh, well, uh, just, just not enough of them. And unfortunately, we've put ourselves into those, you know, situations where they're almost, you know, I'd say impossible to overcome. As the starter role has shifted to uh, Malik, how has he been just like from a leadership perspective and even just being someone like a catalyst for the vibe to be right? Um, I, th I thought it was good last week. I thought he was into it. I thought he um, you know, controlled the operation and in and, and, and practice and everything else that we were doing and in meetings and, you know, on the field and then ultimately up into the game. But, you know, we, we you know, the, the, the leadership and everything that's, you know, whether it's Malik or anybody else, like we've, I've always tried to say that there's no restrictions on leadership. We just ask to everybody to know what to do and, and go out and, and play a certain way and prepare a certain way. And when you do that, um, you're more than welcome to lead anybody you want. How does Dallas move Mike Parsons around? And how difficult does that make him to prepare? Uh, for? I mean, just an extremely talented player, uh, gifted player physically, but also uh, instincts. And, and I know that he works extremely hard. I just It's a rare talent to be able to play inside linebacker uh, in college, you know, where he made almost every tackle, uh, and, and then you know transition to this league uh, and be an edge rusher and, and the skill set that he has, whether he's you know rushing, playing a run, he's got a very good knack for his body control, uh, reacting to blockers, uh, you know set whether they overset, underset, you know using his speed, and uh, so they they move him everywhere, and and, and he'll be. Uh, Obviously, a huge challenge. Is it realistic to block him with one guy? Uh, I don't know if that's realistic right now. I mean, I think we'll have to have all hands on deck. You know, we'll certainly have to have, um, you know, we'll have to stay inside out. We'll have to be firm in the middle of the pocket, you know. But if he gets inside, I think that that's a, you know, you, you'll be, the play will be, you know, over or quarterback will be on the move quickly. I think you're reshaped offensive line then, I guess more specifically Levin and Roos inside. Well, I thought they played extremely hard. I think, um, you know, you saw Roos finishing. He was, you know, up until the end, I think, where it became a drop back pass game. He lost to Malik Collins a few times, which, 
you know, there's a lot of people that would lose to Malik Collins, <clears throat> but I thought throughout the course of the game he was competitive. Uh, tried to finish. He was good on his assignments. You know, Corey had a few, you know, operational issues that you know, we'd like to have back and going to make sure that we need to get corrected uh, for Thursday. Uh, and then even uh, La Raven, you know, went in at, at right right tackle and you know did a, did a nice job and, and and held up in there for us. You guys need him the way that you have so far. Yeah, I mean, he just he's known he's learned a lot of positions. He knows all all the linebacker positions, play outside. He's done a really good job on a kickoff return. You know, I think he's really done a nice job there. We just could could use some other guys to kind of get that memo as well. But you know, Gibby's been great to have around. What happened on the play where uh, Chig and Daly didn't didn't really move? I think that'd be one of those operational issues. Um, probably not expecting the ball to be snapped when it was. Uh, however, that's that's no excuse. Um, you know, we all know that when the ball snapped, we're, we're going to have to play, whether that's on defense or offense. And you know, I would say as you're writing Chig and Daly down, you could include about eight other guys, other than the center and quarterback who who didn't didn't do much. But we'd like to not have that snapped when we did. But there's going to be mistakes along the way. Um, <clears throat> we have to just continue to play. After seeing the film, what are the areas where the league absolutely has to be better to give you a chance to win this week or beyond? Well, I think this overall just comfort level, you know, being quicker with progressions, not holding on, you know, not waiting things out. Knowing that you don't have all day, being good operationally, thought he made some good decisions, some really good decisions to to pull, uh, when to give it, uh, extend. I thought when he was decisive, um, you know, was able to get to some guys. Unfortunately, Chig, you know, put the one on the ground and dropped it, and but he got to Bobby and got to Nick on, you know, third and long, and, and was able to get to Woods and. In, in a zone. So, you know, there were some things there that were good, but then obviously I just want to continue to progress. When you talk about the running backs for the Cowboys, uh, two great guys, obviously, you know, Zeke a little bit, and Pollard has just emerged as well. Like, what makes them so difficult as a tandem? Well, I think Zeke is a natural runner. I mean, he runs behind his pads. He's got great balance. Um, physical, you know, and, and I think Tony, um, you, you know, has just gotten better. You know, just coming in as a as a you know change of pace back, but I mean he runs their entire offense, and you know it's real difficult out of the backfield with the ball in his hands, um, you know, whether that be you know speed or his ability. You know, I mean they put him under you know behind the quarterback, and he stretches and cuts, and uh, or or any of the other scheme plays that they have for him. It's a it's a great compliment. Um, you know, so we'll have to know which backs in the game, and obviously. You know, try to do a great job of defending the run. What stands out to you about their offensive line? Well, I mean, I think they've, you know, been together for most of the season. Um, you know, I know they've had some moving parts since the beginning, but, you know, Smith's the guy that's been in there. Martin's been in there. And, you know, Tyler's been in there. So they, um, they're they building some comfort level there. Um, you know, they do everything that you'd ask to do. They get the guys covered up. They stay inside out. They finish. They move the line of scrimmage on their, on their gap scheme stuff, and they they get out on their you know landmarks in, in the zone run scheme and try to give the running backs you know different options, whether it's to stay front side or or they do a nice job on the back side where they can stretch and cut. How did Nico look uh, in his first game back, and how well did he hold up? Uh, I think he you know obviously impacted the game at some points in time was was productive um, you know as far as you know how he held up we'll see kind of you know haven't done a whole lot uh, since the game so we'll see how he feels today and you know continue to monitor him and, and try to get him as ready as we can to play defensively when you look at third and fourth down you guys have had success on third down not as much on fourth what is kind of happening just from one down to another to have like that much of a difference um, you know, I don't know if there's any one thing. It's, you know, I hope there's not like a let up. We try to, you know, preach to the guys that there's obviously 
parts of the game or parts of the field where, you know, four down is, is going to be something that's going to be a part of, you know, the operation when it's third and seven and on the 38, you're going to probably have to defend, you know, two downs most likely. Um, you know, I got a big fourth down stop the other day coming out of half, I think, right? So I um, wish we could have turned that into points, but, you know, I don't know. We've done a nice job on third down and then some of the fourth down stuff, you know, haven't been as good. At when you talk eight to four, eight to four thirty guys on, on Saturday, were you talking to some specific guys or were you talking kind of thematically about everybody giving Yeah, them? I mean, I think that, you know, I guess I just have to be more careful with how I choose my words. I just was trying to say that we all need to, you know, to, to say less and, and just try to start doing more right now and just, you know, studying more, you know, communicating more, asking more questions, um, you know, coaching better, explaining, teaching better, um, you know, so that players can come back with questions and say, hey, I saw this. Um, how would we, you know, play that? Or, you know, I wasn't, you know, I'm not, I'm not – spreading a message to the media that I haven't said to the to the players uh, at any point in time that's it's not how I want to coach so that that that's all that was that was just you know just explaining it I think you know again building off that how how much better can we get physically at this point in the season where can we try to find an edge to, to help us win with the ability to still possibly bring up one guy from IR. Have you seen any progress from David Long or Kyle Phillips? I would say that neither of those two would be an option this week, Kayla. Brian still has a 53, an indication he's still got a shot? I would say that that's an indication that he's doing everything he possibly can um, to, to get back and help this team at some point. Mike, given that your situation has crystallized a little bit about what you have to do, in week 18 and what it could ultimately mean from everything you've gone through. What's your message to the team as they start this week? Say less and do more. I just, I just told you what the message was. Um, yeah, prepare to win. Prepare to win this week. Uh, work the game plan today. Work the game plan on first and second down, third down tomorrow. Uh, you know, great opportunity for for a lot of guys that continue to play for us, you know, look at Jordan Roos or Corey Levin or you know, Jack Gibbons or anybody else that's had an opportunity because, you know, somebody isn't here for whatever reason. And, you know, some of those guys continue to try to take advantage of the opportunity. And then we'll just keep having to find guys that, that want to do that.